he runs to his brother and says, hey brother, I had this great dream, I need to tell you about it. He said, I was, I was out in the field and these, the 11 sheep was out there and I was standing right there and my sheep stood up. And all the other sheep bowed to me. His brother looked at him like, but you made it bow to you. You trying to say, we're going to bow to you, bro? Like, who is you? You, you ain't God. I don't know, you ain't nobody, King. You ain't nobody. So right off the bat, they start hating right there. Like, who is you? You know, I'm just trying to tell you my dream, brother. And sometimes, when God gives you dreams, aspirations, <laughs> God might tell you you're going to go to college and, and be a doctor, lawyer. God might tell you, you say, no, you're going to admit that next great thing. God might say, you know what? You are going to be that person that's going to change America. You're going to be that person that's going to make a difference in this world. And God might give you that. You share your dream with somebody or you can start working towards your dream and be just that one little hater. Come on, look. Oh, you can't do that. Now, your mama didn't go to college. Your daddy did. But by the way, your mama locked up, so you're going to jail too. Your, your daddy been shot three times, so you know you probably get shot too. You get them haters come up on you and face what his brother was doing. His brother was just hating up on you, hating up on him. Like, man, who is you? So then, you know, he kept on dreaming. God kept sowing these dreams into him. And one day, he he came to his dad in front of his brothers. And his dad was like, his dad was like, you know, what's going on? What, you know, his, brother, his brother was mean. These dudes were mean to him. I mean, it slapped his head. Shut up. I mean, it was just mean to him because he was just, he was, first of all, he was a dad favorite. Always loved him. Everybody was like really cool with him. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, it was just really bad because like his dad was just, the dad showed so much favoritism. Let me tell you something, that's how God do it. God showed you so much favoritism because he loved you. You his child. He wants you to be great. He wants you to be great. So of course he's gonna pour all the blessings on you. Even though you go through all this turmoil in your life, all this drama. And let me tell you, his brother was so mean with him. But he kept on, God kept sowing dreams into him. That's what God gonna do. No matter what you go through your life, God always gonna give you something. Always gonna put something in your life. Going gonna put you in a situation to make you better. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Y'all got me? All right. And when you see this, he had another dream. He goes to his brother, he goes back to his daddy. He said, he said dad, dad, I had a dream again. And these 11 stars and the, the moon and the sun, and they all kind of jumped, jumped out of the sky and, and kind of lowered. And I was, I was like the sun. Everything evolved around me and I was up in the air. Everything jumped. And his, his dad was like, Boy, if you don't stop telling these dreams to all your brothers, they gonna kill you, they gonna beat the brakes off you, boy. And when he was like, Dad, I'll tell you, but his dad was really secretly proud of him, like, yeah, I know my son's gonna be great. Yeah. You know, you got, you got that one person in your corner always always support you, always love you. Like, like Brother Abel, you know what I'm saying? No, he always there for you, always say you can do it. You can, yes, I know you can. So his dad was that dude, right there holding him down. And when you look at that, his brothers was furious at this point. They, they mad. They so, they so bad, like, you know what? But this dude gotta come. Like, they, they brother was hating on him so bad, like, this dude gotta go. And one day, they say, you know what? We're gonna send you across town. I want you to go across town and go out here. I want you to go shopping. I want you to go get sheep. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta think about it. This dude, he dressed nice. His dad loved him so much, he made him this coat. They call it the coat of many colors. And it, it would relate to this day, like some polo, some true religion jeans. He came in with the hottest KDs on. Like his, his dad gave him the best of the best. His brother still wearing scrubs. You know what I'm saying? So he was really, really mad and hating him. Like, oh my God, you got the best clothes, you got everything. Dad loves you. Yeah, I've been trying to you. So they sent him way off across town. And when they sent him across town, he like he's a young teenager. He shouldn't be going by himself. They sent him by himself. And when they sent him by himself, he goes through the task on his way back. All of his brothers catch him. On the midstream and say, hey, come here, man, I'll talk to you right quick. Like, all this stuff you talking about, we tired of you. We sick of your mess, so you think you're better than us. You say you're talking about you're gonna be a king or somebody, you're gonna be running the country. All this crazy stuff. It was just an infuriate. I'm gonna say sometimes in life you need your haters. So his brother, his brothers, they 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 took him, tied him up, threw him in a well, one of the brothers like, man, that's our little brother, we can't do this to him. We can't do this to our little brother. But he's like, you know what? This dude gotta go. They threw him in a the wheel. They sat there and they plotted on him. Oh, we gotta get rid of this kid. What are we gonna do with this dude? He ain't going back home with us. Because daddy is all focused on him. We out here working in the field. He tired of this guy. Man, that's how people live. They, they sometimes see him like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this person. Always doing the greatness. Always being blessed. You know what I'm saying? No, but in the midst of him being blessed, them hating on him pushed him into 
Sir Destiny. They, they mess around a guy was walking by from Egypt and he sold their own brother to slavery. That was so grimy, right? You ever had somebody do something to you so bad, like a family member cousin, just do you so dirty, and just mess you up. Like, man, why, why would you do that to me? Fuck my brother, fuck my sister, fuck the love me, fuck my mom, fuck my daddy. Why, why would you treat me like this? Why would you just do me any kind of way? And that was what brothers told me. They just did them any kind of way because they was feeling insignificant in that season. And so they sold them to slavery. And they went to slavery, working for this, just like emperor type dude. This dude had like a, a big old mansion. He was like kind of running the house, making sure everybody clean, did the right jobs. He was cleaning up, he was doing good. But this, this, this king guy had this beautiful wife. I mean, this chick is bad. Oh my God, it's a beautiful woman. I mean, God really blessed this woman. And, you know, Joseph was a respectable young man, you know, like, at this time, about 18, in this area, you know what I'm saying, about 18, respectable young man, he's like, no, he's like, he, he, you see, he, when she come in the room, he put his head down, you know, you know just to keep his mind on Jesus, you know what I'm saying, because he was always a man, always a young man was just always chasing after God so hard. And in the story, he was like, he was just working in the house, and the lady come in, and, and she, I'm gonna say she had a spirit of a thought on her, you know what I'm saying? You know, the young people was come on. She was just really, really, really ratchet. She's like, come on, like, like, make love to me. He's like, no, stop. you got a husband. Ain't about that life. <laughs> he like, she's like, no, you, 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 you better. My husband running this joint, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm the prince of this house. I run this, and he's like, no. So, you know what? She straight lied on him. She went out and lied on him. She went and told her husband, hey, he, he, he trying to rape me. He looking like, no, I told you no. So Joseph going through all this stuff in his life, going through all this drama. He ended up getting locked in jail. He spent years in jail, just locked up for something he didn't do. How, how, anybody here been in trouble for something he didn't do? That's what I'm saying. Me too. I, ain't gonna lie. I've been in trouble. I, I got a sister by the name of Quinny. Love her to death. She, she broke something at my, my, uh, my mom's house one time. And I'll tell you something. I, I, I don't know if it's still over it. She broke something. I got the break speed off me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got one of the worstest whoopings in history of whoopings. You know what I'm saying? I, I promise you, it should be in a dictionary under whooping. It's you gonna see my picture and drink. You know what I'm saying? Under worst whoopings. I promise you. I said, over oh, something she broke. And she, and she still haven't confessed it yet to this day. She, she grown as heck. She still haven't said, Mama, you know, I, I broke that, I broke that vase. Yeah, I did it. She still haven't said it yet. I'm still salty about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna text her tonight, like, like you, you, just, you just tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of the worst feelings in my life to get in trouble for this, for something I didn't do. Now, don't get it wrong, I was a bad kid. I was taking up a lot of stuff around the crib, but this one thing I didn't do. You know what I'm saying? Who hate getting in trouble for something you didn't do? Now, if I did do it, I, I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble for it, but you know, I roll with it. You know what I'm saying? And it hurt me, it hurt me, it hurt me deeply. You know what I'm saying? Let's just say the opportunity to this guy. He hurt me deeply. And so while he's in jail for a few years, he's sitting there chilling, but he has such a great spirit. He never let, he never let all his, his adversities beat him down. Like a lot of y'all, no matter what y'all been through, y'all not letting the world beat y'all down. Y'all not letting us in your circumstances Define y'all. You are not what you're going through. You are what God's molding you and shaping you to be. And he's in jail. He's humble. He's still praising God. He's still searching, you know, saying, oh, for the wisdom of God and seeking God. So they begin to put him in charge of the whole jail. Like this dude, like I've been in jail before. I'm gonna tell y'all, you ain't gonna lie to y'all. I've been in jail before. And, and some guys in jail, they work the whole, they work the whole jail house. I mean, they they be cleaning. They, be, they get the good sandwiches. They get the the, the best mats, the thick mats. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you in jail? You get those skinny little mats. They hurt like heck, and it's really cold. These guys get the best blankets. He was one of them guys that had the favor from the guards, you know what I'm saying? They gave, they gave him the big mats, they gave him the big old sandwiches, the extra Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? He stayed warm at night, he was that dude, you know what I'm saying? He was always cleaning up, you know what I'm saying? The guards would come in and just thumbs up, that's the dude. He was that guy in jail. You know, in jail, people don't like that guy, you know what I'm saying? Who don't like the guy that gets you? People don't like that guy at all, you know what I'm saying? They got the, that dude like, oh, he, he had to be a good two-shoe, and he was, he was a Christian at the same time, in a land that everybody wasn't a Christian, it was just crazy. And when you see this, the guards trusted him to let him walk freely. He, his, his, his cell wasn't even locked. 
he can come in and out of cell when he wants to because he was just that humble. He was just that good of a guy in Jesus. It's like some of y'all. Y'all just it's like some of y'all. Y'all are just this great, just that wonderful. That say, oh, God just, just bless y'all. So when these guys come in jail, a cook and a servant of the of the, of the, the king's house, of the, of the top dog, the, the big man, the king of the king, the one who runs the whole Egypt, the king servants get locked up. And and so at this time he's he's been so seeking, Joseph been seeking God so much, he has a special kind of type of gift. God gave him a special gift. He's able to interpret dreams. <laughs> you tell him your dream, he can say exactly what it means from A to Z. So the guy, one guy come in and he's a cook and, and he's like worried, like, what's gonna happen to me? So he tells Joseph his dream and Joseph like, ooh, bro, it's gonna be ugly for you, bro. Me, uh. Uh, in three days, homie, I hate to tell you this, you're going to die. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. I hate to break it to you like that. But your dream is, I don't know what you did to the king, bro. You, you out of there. You know, I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm going to pray for you. That's all I can do. I can pray for you. And the other guy, he was a, you know, a servant in, in, the, in, the, in the house. And he was like, what's going to happen to me? He said, he said, in three days' time, you're going to go back and work in, in, in the king's house. But I need you to do this favor. Tell the, he said, tell the king about me, about the guy that's been locked up for something he didn't do. I'm saying that from another town. That, you know, he's, I tell them, no, I'm, I'm an Israelite. I'm not from here. I, I barely speak the language. But tell him that I was sold into slavery. Let him know about me. Please let him know about me. So years ago, so the other guy, he, he ended up dying because you know, the king put him to death. other guy was back working at the king's house. And he never says a thing. You know, you ever did something to somebody? did something to somebody? You helped them out. You study with somebody, you, you work with somebody, you help build something with somebody, and they never, ever, ever, ever said thank you or remember you to the, the car. You're like, wow, like, I blessed you. You can help me. Just let you down. You ever been to that situation? I've been let down by people so much. But God always wants you to know that people might let you down, but He would never let you down. You know what I'm saying? And every time, Joseph was hated on.